a common request that we hear is that users want to be able to use Excel's pivot and graphing capabilities with data that comes from Delta Cobra. So in this video, we're going to show you how to do that. Before looking at this video, we recommend you take a look at the video on Cobra's reporting architecture that's available on the Pinnacle YouTube channel. Please note that during this video, we're logged into Cobra as a system administrator. Cobra has a standard report called Pivot that's used to produce a responsibility assignment matrix. We're going to take this report and extend it so that it can be used for more general purpose graphing and pivoting capabilities in Excel. So let's run the standard Pivot report and see what it does. Uh, our sample project's already selected. I'm not going to filter any data. The standard responsibility assignment matrix uses the WBS and the OBS structures. Fat information from these cost sets can be shown on the RAM. And then that's it. That's the default prompt. So we'll get the default responsibility assignment matrix. So this is what we get. So Cobra uses Excel's pivot capabilities to produce this report. But we want to go beyond this. We want to be able to show, we want to be able to produce totally different reports other than the responsibility assignment matrix. So uh, we want to be able to include time phased information, want descriptions included on the criteria or on the structures. Um, we want to be able to load up lots of criteria into here so we can do graphs and and slice and dice the data in lots of different ways. So we're going to take a copy of the standard report and we're going to we're going to modify it. We don't want to modify the standard report. So to take a copy, we'll run through the, the prompts for the standard report and then we'll save it at the end to a different name. So we don't want to run it, we'll save it. We'll say training pivot. And our new report's not going to be produced in the RAM, so let's just uh, let's just call it Excel Pivot Report. Okay, and we'll put it in a category called Training. So now we've saved that report. So we've created a new report. There's a copy of the pivot one. Uh, so we're going to modify this copy. We're going to modify the properties on it. So we go to the report information dialog and then the report definition tab in there. So these are properties that are passed to the report. So um, some of the properties here are, are lists of things. So like this one, for example, the cost sets property is a list of the cost sets that are going to be passed to the report by default. There are other properties here that are Boolean flags that indicate how things will work. Um, so we're going to, one of the first thing we're going to do is change it so that it prompts for, prompts the user to be able to select a calendar. So we're going to go to this allow select calendar set property. And we're going to change that zero to a one. This is one of those Boolean properties. So if we change it to a one, then it will prompt for a calendar that we want to use in the report. And then we're going to change the this calendar set property is, is the default calendar that would be used. And we don't want to use 18. We want the default calendar to be 00. zero. The user is going to be able to override that, but by default, we want 00. zero. And a couple of other properties we want to adjust. This display data worksheets criteria description. This one controls whether descriptions are included for criteria or not. We want to include descriptions, so we're going to change that to a 1. And then we want to include the maximum number of criteria that can be included on the report. So the default is set to six. The maximum is eight, so we're going to change it to the maximum. So now we've changed the properties for that report. So now when we run it, let's see what happens. So I still don't want to filter, but now you can see my maximum number of criteria has gone up to eight. So I'm going to include some other criteria in here. Um, and I want to include the forming organization we've got in there as a as a code. So now I've got six criteria, and we could go up to eight if we wanted to. Um, my results, I'm going to include direct, uh, GNA, and overhead. I'm going to include the dollars, the currency type results. You could include the others, but I'm just going to include those ones for these purposes. A calendar set is now zero, 0 by default. I could change it, but I'll leave it at that. Um, I'll leave the cost sets as they are for now. And the scale factor is fine. I don't want to display the report options, but I am going to save this report so that I can just rerun this combination of parameters again if I want to. 
So now the data has been dumped out to, uh, to our Excel file. So now if you look at the data tab, we can see we've got a lot of information on here we can use in, in Excel. So I can, for example, include a, a pivot chart in here using this data. So just to show you what it would look like. So I can use the dates. Um, I only want to show budget on here. I don't want to show for this particular purpose. And I want to see information by performing organizations. So now I've got a decent looking chart. that uh, shows my budget by performing organization. I could change this chart type to a stacked histogram if I want. So now I've got a nice time phase budget showing dollars, budgeted dollars by performing organization. If I want to go further, if I want to make this dynamic, I could use the report filter capability in, in the pivot table. So now I can select a particular part of the WBS that the chart is to be drawn for. So I can drill down through the WBS into different areas. So now I've created a nice, flexible, dynamic charting capability in Excel. I can save this file and I can distribute it to my users. Um, if you want, you can include more pivots in this single file. So we could create a, a new pivot table and insert it in here just to show you quickly. We can include cost sets. We can put that on there. So that should go there. Um, let's see. So now we've got a nice pivot time phase pivot table. And get the cost sets in the right place. And if I want, I can make this uh, allow drill down here as well. So I could allow the CAMs to select their particular data set. So, so now I've got a, an Excel file that's got a pivot chart and a pivot table in it. And you could add five or six pivot tables and charts in here and then distribute that one file out to your users to give them a nice dynamic reporting capability.